In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can use CSS grids in Divi 5 to create some amazing looking complex layout, but without touching any line of code and everything will be done inside the Divi Visual Builder. So if that sounds interesting, then let's dive in. Now the main motive of this video is to show you how you can build your own custom grids so it won't feel overwhelming or it won't feel like a high-end technical job. I will show you how simple it is to create these CSS grids using Divi Visual Builder and how you can build your own custom grid once you understand the basic concept of it. And I'll try my best to keep it as simple as possible. Along with that, if you want to learn more about CSS Grid and deep dive into it, we have created a complete blog post where we have explained every feature that you can find in Divi 5 to create CSS advanced grids. So do check out the link in the video description below. So here we are inside Divi 5 Visual Builder and here is one of the example of CSS Grid layout that we have created using Divi 5. And this is one of eight examples that we have given away for free that you can download from our blog post. Once again, the link is in the video description. Now let's see how we can create these kind of grids and what exactly is the basic concept of creating any type of grid layout. So here is an example. So if you take a look at this grid layout, if we remove every content, this is the basic bare bones structure. So first we will learn how we can rearrange our columns into these custom grids. So inside your Divi Visual Builder, if you have a new section, if you click on this plus icon to add a new row, other than these native structures, we now have grid layouts. So you can go ahead and choose any grid layout as per your design requirement. So most of the time you will find a grid layout that you want to use for your design. But let's say you have a custom grid in your mind and you want to create everything from scratch. So how do you approach that? So for that, let's say we start with this basic grid of two columns. Now if we click on this row settings and here we can see we have two columns. Now let's say we remove this one column and we now only have one row and one column and we are going to add more columns to create our custom grid and we will take a look at how we can arrange all our columns into a grid format. Now in order to create your custom grid you need to make sure that you understand your structure really well. So we are going to take this example only. So let me first give you a breakdown of column and the structure of this grid so that we can recreate it from scratch. So I'm just going to open up a whiteboard here so that I can show you everything that is going on here. If you take a look at this grid, we can divide it into columns and rows. Now for a minute, consider every column that we are going to add inside our row as normal boxes. So for this one, we have box number one, which is this vertical one. We have box number two, which is this rectangle. We have box number three, which is this here, blue square. And we have box number four, which is this rectangle. And we have box number five, which is this rectangle. So we have a pretty complex grid layout here with different columns. Or I should say as a simple term for right now, consider it as just boxes. Now, this layout of boxes is divided into different columns and rows. Now we can clearly see that there are two rows. One is here on top and the second one is here at the bottom. And our first box is actually occupying the both rows. But we can clearly see that there is a divider line here, which is actually making two rows. In the same way, we can divide our grid structure into columns. We can see we have column number one. So we can see that we have column number one here. We have column number two here because we can see that there is a separator line. So we, as soon as we have a separator line, it means that it's a separate column. In the same way, we have column number three, because we have this separator line here. And we have column number four, which is holding this box on, that is our box number three. So now we know that we are going to use five boxes and we are going to divide them into two rows and four columns. So we know that this is going to be our structure and we just need to make sure that every box is aligned properly to make our final grid. So let's see how we can do that. So first let's go ahead and add our five boxes. So we come back here and in this row where we only have one column. So consider this as a box. So we are going to duplicate this. 
So now we have five columns or we have five boxes which we need to arrange as a grid. So now we know we need five boxes. So we have created five here and we also know that we need two rows and four columns. So we go to design and in the layout, here is an option for number of columns. So we set four here and now we have four columns, but it's nowhere looking like our grid here. And that's what we need to fix. So once we have made our columns, we need to decide how much space each column is going to occupy in our column or in our rows. So that's what we are going to customize in the next step. And to understand that, we need to make sure that we see our structure as border lines. So let me show you what I mean. So let me just get rid of this box here. And I have created these border lines, which I'm just going to show now. So here is our grid and we have divided it into different columns and rows and we are calling all of these columns as boxes. So if we need to say how we are going to create this box one, so we can say that box one will be starting from column one and it will end at column number two. Along with that, we can also say that the same column or the same box will start from row number one and it's going to touch the boundary of row number three. Now there is no row number three, but it's the border line. Because if we have more rows, this line will be the starting point of row number three. So just to define how our box is going to be laid out in our grid, we can say that it's going to start from column number one and it will extend up to column number two starting. In the same way, it will be starting from row number one the border of row number one and it will extend up to the border line of row number three in the same way. So in order to say how this box number two is going to be created, we can say that it will start from the boundary of column number two and it will end till the border of column number four. And similarly, we can say for this box number four, it will start from column number two and it will end at column number three. And for the row, it will start from row number two because it's starting from here and it will end or extend up to row number three. Once we understand this kind of mapping of boundaries, we will be able to create any grid as we want. So let me just go ahead and copy the colors from here so that we can identify which box we are talking about. So I'm just going to add a heading here and just going to just type in one. And similarly, I'll add another heading and call it two. So now after just giving numbers in each column, I have just given the background color and just aligned the text in center. And now if we go back again in our row, we go to design. And if we go in layout, we can reduce this gap in between. So here is our horizontal gap. Let's make it 10 and the vertical gap. Let's make it 10 again. So here we have a pretty bare bone structure and we need to recreate this. So we will start with box number one and it's starting from column number one and it's expanding to the boundary of column number two. And for the rows, it's starting from row number one and it's expanding to row number three. So let's go ahead and do that. So we select our column number one and we go to design and in sizing here we have column start, column end, and we also have row start and row end. So here we are going to type in column start as one, column end will be two and row start will be one and row end will be three. So now we see that our box number one is looking pretty much like this one expanding to the complete height. Now with that, let's move on to column number two. Here box number two will be starting from column number two boundary and it's expanding up to the boundary of column number four. So let's do that. We click on second box or second column and we go to design in sizing. We go to column start. We will make it two and column end will be four. Now for the row, we will start from row number one. So we will add row end as two. 
So it's going to stay here, but it will be expanded like this because our box number two have occupied two and three column. So now we jump on to our third box which is in our fourth column. Now again, we are going to describe it in the same way. It start from column number four and it will end at column number five and it start at row number one and it's end at row number two. So let's do that. It's already in that place, but still let's go ahead and add the numbers. So column starts at four and column ends at five. So even if we have the four column, the ending will be at the starting of fifth column if we consider that we have fifth column here. So that's why it will always stay at the end of our grid. In the same way for row, it will be starting from one and end to row number two. Now let's come back to our box number two. Again, it is starting from column number two to column number three and in this case, it will start from row number two and expand up to row number three border line. So we have the fourth one. We again go to design. We go to sizing. And here we are going to type in for column. It will start from column number two, ends at column number three. And for the rows, we are going to start from two and this will end at three. All right, so now it's time to create the position for fifth one. So we go to our fifth column here or the fifth box. And here we can see for the box number five. So for this box number five, it's getting started from boundary of column number three and it's ending at the boundary of column number four. And again, for the row, it's starting from row number two and expanding up to border of row number three. So let's do that. So we go to design and for sizing and again it will start for the column and for the column we are going to choose three as the start and five for the end so that it occupies the complete space. Now for the rows it will start from row number two and will end at row number three. It stays there but now it occupies the complete width. So if you notice we have actually replicated the structure of this entire grid. So once you understand the concept of dividing your design into boxes and know how many columns and rows you need to create this grid and you understand how your box is going to start from which column and end at which column and same with rows, how it's going to start from which row and extend to which row, you will be able to create any kind of grid as you like. Now, once the structure is ready, all we need is just add the content in these columns or in these boxes and do the styling as we want. Because now we know the basic concept of creating this grid, we can create any type of grid layout. And of course, you can go ahead and use our ready-made grids to create your design. Now this is just one of the feature of grid layout in DB5 that you can use to create these grids. There are a lot more options that you can use to customize your grid layout to any kind of style. Now once you know how you can create your own CSS grid layout in DB5, you can now dive into the advanced settings of CSS grid that we have in DB5 Visual Builder. And once again, if you want to deep dive into all of that, you can go ahead and check out our blog post that we are going to link in the video description below. So go ahead and try CSS grids in DB5 today and do let us know what you think about it. And if you like this video, then make sure you give it a like and share it with your friends and community. And for more DB and WordPress updates, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. That's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.